Welcome back. Once upon a time, the possession of proper elocution skills was considered essential for, for professional life. Now, there you go. I don't hold myself to be any perfect uh, uh, speaker at all, but I do try to avoid tautology and Americanisms from creeping into what I say each night here on Credlin. Not easy, though. Not easy everywhere in the media. Well, there used to be a set of standards, properly pronounced words. Not anymore. Our resident wordsmith here at Credlin, author and broadcaster Kel Richards, we talked about this last week. You flooded him with online uh, suggestions. Here's a list. Here's some of your worst examples. Kel, take it away. What have we been pronouncing wrong? Well, there was a flood, as you said, of emails from Credlin viewers really upset about mispronunciations. Important. Uh, where the middle T is turned into a D, so it becomes a kind of important. Uh, now, I've heard people say it, I've heard uh, politicians say it. The, the key to understanding to this is it gets us into the central issue. There are some mispronunciations which come from a lazy mouth and one some which come from a lazy mind. This is a lazy mouth. We've just got to be more careful and make sure that we move the tongue to make the T sound just before the just behind the teeth and so on. So that's just a lazy mouth mispronunciation. The next one is the person who runs a restaurant is a restaurateur. There is no N in the middle. But just very quickly, the reason there's no N in the middle is interesting. Both words came into English from French from a source meaning to restore. In other words, it's a place you go to restore the tissues with a, a nice meal. Uh, but when both words came into English, they both meant the same thing. They both meant a place. You could go to have dinner at a restaurant or you could call the place where you're going to have dinner a restaurateur. Then early in the 19th century, they diverged and one became the name of the place and the other became the name of the man who runs the place. The man who runs or the woman who runs the place is a restaurateur, no mm -hmm. end. Be careful. So, uh, ceremony really irritates me and testimony is the same mm, when people too. start moaning in the middle of it uh, there's no ceremony uh there's no testimony there's no moaning at the bar going on here it's ceremony it's testimony the moaning versions are american pronunciations and a good friend of mine who does it all the time and dr drives me nuts uh watches far too much american sport on television so i know where he gets it from but you know we need to be a bit disciplined their ceremonies their testimonies and so on now uh, one that several viewers, in fact, about a dozen viewers altogether, ended up drawing to my attention is people who say should of when they're actually saying mm. should have. And it's because the abbreviation of should have is should apostrophe VE. So we, we know we're saying should have and we know it's a, an abbreviation of should have. This comes from a lazy mind. No one would ever say that not knowing how the verb is meant to work. We all know it should have and we're abbreviating should have to should have, but should have sounds a little bit like should of. So we end up saying should of, and that's just mentally lazy. You're not thinking about carefully about what you're saying. So do they make sense, uh, Peter? You can see why they irritate people. Yeah, they do. And, and they, particularly that last one, particularly the last one, contractions, I see it even in print, you know, in, in really? professional documents. Oh. Yes, people getting stuck where their apostrophe should go. What else have you got? OK, now, the next one is appreciate or appreciate. Which one do you say? Now, I'll tell you the, the, what I think is the correct answer. Appreciate is the British pronunciation, and the British pronunciation rules in Australia for this. We say appreciate. The American pronunciation mm -hmm. is appreciate, but because of the American cultural influence, appreciate is creeping in and becoming more widespread. I, I, I'd, I'd resist it. I mean, it's a schedule schedule is another one where the American pronunciation of schedule has come in, but we've lost that one. There was a study done by Macquarie University showing now most people under the age of 40 say schedule, uh, and those of us over 40 say schedule. Uh, th this is just going to change. Oh, for the so that's, that's the line. It's a, I'm, I'm a schedule. What about another one? <laughs> Res resolution. I say resolution, but I used to work for a uh, leader of the opposition who used to say resolution. Yeah. Look, the, the standard British and Australian pronunciation is resolution, so that the middle sound is a very, very short A sound. That's what's called by linguists mm -hmm. a schwa sound, which is a, a really short sound. Uh, so you stress the first and third syllab syllables and it's resolution. Now, that that's what it should be. Um, but, OK, people get confused. I, I th There's room for confusion in some of these things. Can I do different two, different Any from, more? different Any than? More? Yep, yeah, the different yes, ones. Please. So uh, we, we were taught years ago, uh, when we went to school and grammar was taught, you say similar to and different from. 
Uh, and that's still correct. That's still right. But we're being told that the American version, which is different than, is coming in and taking over. And Professor Pam Peters, uh, who is the expert on, on style and style guide, said, this is, what, this is a battle we've got to give up on. We're not going to win this one. All right, well, I've got some homework for next week because I want to buy contrast or in contrast. I've got a few yes. others. Uh, I'll come back to you, Kel. Everyone loves this segment. I love it probably most of all, but I know my viewers do. We'll get to that next week. Thank you Talk for your time. Talk to you time. then. Bye. How good is he? How good is he? Ozwords.com.au.